Check it out, this thing is powered on and there's nothing plugged into it because I put in my own 4,000 milliamp hour LiPo battery like you'd find in a tablet and this switch and it charges from the original jack. So this black box is battery powered now. Let me show you how I did it. Hey everybody, to take apart your 1010 black box, you first do the six hex screws, three on the front, three on the back. Lift the back lid. You don't need to disconnect the ribbon cable. Unscrew all the screws on the blue circuit board and the bolts around the knobs. Then the circuit board will lift out. The screen will stay attached to the circuit board. I got this super tiny toggle switch to go into this little hole that I made in the back of it. It looks like I scratched it because I did, but this is a used unit. I used a auto punch here to put a dent in the metal before drilling so it didn't walk but the auto punch still slid and scratched it. This is the battery manager board. It hooks to the battery and you put power into it and you can take power out of it. This button is the same button on any other USB battery pack and these four lights show how much charge is in it. It likes five volts and it gives you five volts for a USB time. I'm tapping into the USB power here. I'm going to use this for the power input to charge the battery and to have the battery go out into this. I wish I could put the battery situation in between the jack and this, but what we're going to do is when the battery is charging, this thing will be getting its power from the USB in also. And then when the switch is flipped, it'll flip to the battery output being connected to this pin instead. Warning, use low heat with these little switches. This one, I had the soldering iron too hot and the pin melted the casing and bent. And now when it flips, like one direction flips rougher than the other direction. So this board gets the power from the battery and this switch connects to either the input or the output of this board. When it's in the input, then this jack will give it power and charge the battery and also run the thing because the jack's still connected. When it's switched over to the output, it should detect this thing and give it five volts from this board, even with nothing connected here. Okay, I'm gonna switch this from being connected to the input, from here to the input to connecting this to the output. Get ready. Hey, so there we go. It detected it without me having to push the button and then it gave it power. Now to stick the board in there, I'm using this red 3M double-sided foam tape and just doing a couple layers of it to get this board off the other board here. And then to see the lights, I'm going to cut a slot in the back of the case. So there's the little fella in its home. It just barely fits. I got it flush mounted and then there's the charger board and then a slot in the back is going to let me see the LEDs. Oh, and I didn't show you how the battery fits in yet either. It goes right there. It's the exact size we need. And at uh, four amp hours, it should last hours with this thing. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of double-sidedness double over these uh, capacitors to give them a little bit of foam padding. So underneath the red is a gray foam. See that? And that's that 3M sticky double-sided time we looked at earlier. Oh, I got a wire pinched in there. I gotta get that wire unpinched or we're gonna have a problem. Okay, get ready for the scariest part. This is the slot for the battery level indicator. I'm using a Dremel cutoff wheel. That is some no joke metal. You guys saw I almost went the wrong direction at first. So this is a good thing this is a used model. This is how I'll learn how to do this for future ones maybe. Deburr that. If any of these metal flakes fall into the tiny 
circuit board situation inside. We're we're donezo. Clean that up. Okay, maybe some Sharpie marker will make that look factory. Like there'd be a factory slot for a battery level indicator. You can see all this metal dust has got to come off or it could sort things out. There it is. There's the slot I cut to see the LED indicators for the battery strength. It's not the cleanest cut, but it's really tiny. It's like a lot cleaner when you see it from further away. Let's let it focus. It's a thin little cut. I was just zoomed in when you see the roughness. I might like clean it up with some epoxy, but it's already a used unit and it's, it's for me. So I think that might be good enough. And that's the little baby switch. And right now the switch is set to off, which is letting the power come in here, run the unit and also charge the battery. Okay, in conclusion, one final thing. These screws poke in towards the battery area. So that foam tape you saw me use earlier, I put foam tape on the battery where the screw heads into it. So be really careful about anything poking the battery. You don't want to have that galaxy problem. So there's the final slot with all filled up lights going on. It's a little bit night ridery. You can see I didn't cut the perfect cut. There's a little blemishiness. I should have taped it up. But hey, first try, used machine. Also, the bubbles are like uh, on an anti-glare screen I got online. That's not the best screen protector idea. And final thoughts, I really love this thing. It's like a Ableton and a piece of hardware, if you like the clip launcher situation from Ableton. And well, I almost dropped it on camera. We uh, like, follow, comment, subscribe, please, for more Gizmotroniness. ness